story. Heavy rains continue to pound a large portion of East Africa, causing death and devastation. In Kenya and Tanzania, at least 240 people have died in floods in recent days, and tens of thousands have been displaced. On Monday, police said at least 40 people died when a dam burst in western Kenya. From the Kenyan capital Nairobi, Ruben Chama reports. Kenyan police say a dam collapsed early Monday, sending a wall of water through houses and cutting off a major road in the Maimayu area of the Great Rift Valley region. Heavy rains have been pounding the country since mid-March and the meteorology department has warned of more to come. Munir Ahmed is a senior communications officer at Kenya Red Cross Society. Since the wake of the March to May rainfalls, we have had over 30,000 households affected in 31 counties. We've had over 14,000 households displaced as well in various parts of the country. Some of the major areas that have been affected as a result of the persistent rains are Nairobi, Chana River, Garissa, Kisumu. Ahmed says the number of people affected by the deadly floods has risen to more than 100,000. In Kenya's capital, Nairobi, dozens of families have sought refuge in makeshift camps in churches and schools. City resident Plaxidis Achungo says little help has come so far. My worst fear is actually losing a home and the people that I love because of the floods. Remember this water level was coming in and it would seep inside, like through the doors, any opening it would find. And this water has like a lot of strength. I could see it carrying stuff. So I'm imagining waking up one day and I'm finding it just carrying us and there is no way out because everywhere is flooded. She says the inadequate drainage system in our area is blocked and can't handle the heavy rains. City residents have also expressed concern of possible outbreaks of malaria and other waterborne diseases. The heavy rains have also resulted in loss of livelihoods, killing livestock and crops and destroying roads and bridges. Peter Ondieki is a shoe shiner on the streets of Nairobi. When it is raining, no customers are coming to our business area. When we look at uh, our neighboring county, uh, Machakos and Kiambu, we see how things are. This one is so shameful. Men Kenyans are dying. Kenya's deputy president, Rigathi Gashagwa, says the government is stepping up support efforts. Make sure that we help in uh, unblocking the drainages and where roads have been broken, they can be restored so that people are able to go about their work. We'll be able to put some resources to the public health uh, state department to make sure that we don't have disease outbreaks, to make sure that uh, issues of cholera and malaria are contained. The government has suspended the reopening of schools the second term, which was scheduled to begin Monday, will now resume on May the 6th. The heavier-than-usual rains in Kenya and Tanzania are being fueled by the El Nino weather pattern, which brings wetter conditions to the region. In Tanzania, authorities report tens of thousands of people have been displaced by floods and landslides. Ruben Chama, VOA News. Nairobi. Also in Kenya, five people were killed today in a bomb attack near the border with Somalia. According to the Interior Ministry, the bomb exploded in El Wak town in Mandera County and wounded five other people. There was no immediate claim of responsibility, but the area has had other attacks carried out by Somalia-based Al-Shabaab militants affiliated with Al-Qaeda. The Interior Ministry said the bomb had been placed on a donkey cart to avoid detection. Ugandan authorities have confirmed that the country's forces will remain in Somalia after the expiry at the end of this year of the current mandate of African Union mission, but the other troop contributing countries from the region Kenya and Burundi are yet to be invited into the arrangement. 
Nathan Mugisha, Uganda's deputy head of mission in Somalia, said Uganda People's Defense Forces, who were the first boots on the ground in March 20, 2007, will continue to deploy there as part of proposed post atomy security arrangements. Uganda will be here in whatever form. He told journalists in Mogadishu on April 17th, adding that the new African Union-led mission is being planned on the basis of the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2719 and uh, revealing that the UN SC have asked us to stay and we have said yes. The spokesperson of the Kenya and Burundi contingents could not confirm if their armies would maintain a presence in Somalia, saying it was too early to discuss the arrangement. They indicated that the post atomic security framework is not up to their countries to decide, but a process led by the federal government of Somalia. After the collapse of Mohammed Saidi Barrel's regime in 1991, Somalia became a failed state, wallowing in economic ruin, political turmoil, and destruction stemming from a bloody conflict fueled by armed clan functions, religious extremism, and later terrorism that even global powers tried but failed to stop. Bugisha says, this is the state of affairs into which Uganda led the way as the African Union's peacekeeping mission and other ca African countries followed suit with Burundi sending in troops in December 2007 and later Kenya, Ethiopia, the Djibouti joined the forces that says it has now rebelated 80% of Somalia territory. Some people used to think that uh, this mission was dead on arrival, said Mugisha, when the rest of the world was scared to set foot in Somalia, Uganda sent troops here. But Al-Shabaab remains a threat and with Atmis drawing down to 5,000 troops since, since June last year while passing the baton to the Somali National Army, the enemy has regrouped and reclaimed lost territory in Galmudug and Hishabali. Ugandan commanders under Atmi say that Somalia needs more time to generate a force that can defend its vast territory and that a security vacuum could arise when the mandate of Atmis ends on December 31, 2024.